welcome to Sunny Portia. I have two announcements this morning. Uh, one is that after church we will have the soup or bowl. So if you'd like to bring us soup, or if you didn't have any, we'll have plenty there. You can enjoy some soup. And afterwards, uh, we will have a freezer bowl outside if you want to throw the football around, or just stay right by the window and watch all the kids throw the football around. But we'll be doing that after. Uh, my second announcement is that today we're at the installation of the incoming classes of deacons and elders. It's not listed here in the bulletin, but it will be directly after the sermon. So if you are in the incoming class of deacon or elder, uh, then we'll bring you up here for the installation. And those are my only announcements. Good morning. I have several. Um, we have some congratulations. You can tell she's not a first time mom. She's here already. <laughs> congratulations to Pastor Dustin and Sarah and their baby Ruby. And we also had um, Todd and Michelle Brockett had a, a baby girl. She was born January 21st. And uh, her grandparents are Rachel, Ray and Rachel Brockett. And great grandmother is Tony Marshall. And um, Country Neighbor has given our church fresh, fresh baby carrots and celery for the food pantry. But there's quite a bit um, since the perishable. So there'll be some in the coat room over there, and there'll be some in the back in the back vestibule. And take as many as you want because there is a lot. <laughs> there's like 60 bags of carrots. So how many people do we have here? <laughs> And then anybody that wants to take over, take the leftover points sent us. Um, people have not picked them up, even if you've gotten yours already and you want another one. Um, you're more than welcome to pick them up today after church. And Martha's Circle will be February 4th on Wednesday, and we'll be studying Chapter 10 of the Prayerful Spirit book. So all the ladies come and enjoy that. Um, Saturday we have a Relay for Life breakfast. There's an insert in the bulletin about that. Uh, that will be from 8 to 11 on Saturday. So come and have breakfast and support Relay for Life. Carol, it'll be till noon. Oh, until noon? Well, the paper put it noon, so. Oh, <coughs> until noon. Okay, 8 to noon. So you can have breakfast and lunch. And be a lot, you won't have to have supper. <laughs> and Secret Samaritans, um, the forms are due by next Sunday, so we can um, get the Secret Samaritans out for this year. So if you'd um, fill this form out, we give you an instruction. It's easy to fill out, I did mine. <laughs> so just fill it out and give it to, you can leave it as a church or give it to Alice or give it to myself. And also, um, starting Thursdays, the replacement of the JETS program, we're going to start February 12th, and it's going to be an after school program for the 5th, 6th, and 7th grade, because that is the group of bus that, that they're all on the same bus. And so we're going to do 5th, 6th, and 7th. The bus from climate training will drop them right off here at the church, and we'll have a program from 3 to 4.30 every Thursday. So we're going to have um, food, because they're always hungry when they get out of school. We're going to have music. We're going to have some games. We're going to have question and answer time, and a Bible study, and a prayer time. Um, Janet Marcy is going to be in charge of this, and she's asked me to help her, so I will help her, and then Pastor Dustin will help too. So we hope if you know of anybody that's in the 5th, 6th, or 7th grade, um, please tell them about that so we can get a good program started for the church. Um, Buckeye, I don't know, it's kind of hard with so many different school districts, but if there's a way that anybody can be here at 3 o'clock to 4.30, we'd appreciate that. Um, We'll try to work out transportation too for a lot of people, so it's just one thing. And I think that is it. Okay, call to worship. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice, and let them say among the nations, The Lord reigns. Let the sea roar, and all that fills it, and let the field exalt, and everything in it. Then shall the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Stand if you're able for the invocation of on the prayer in the Lord's Prayer.
us pray. Lord, we thank you uh, that you have brought us here and to your house to worship you. And we ask that you would be here among us so that we could be close to you, that we could hear your voice and your call and feel your love. Fill up this room and your people. We also ask that you would be with us as you teach us to pray, as we say the same prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We'll take a time for a silent confession. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is found in 1 John 1 9. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Now that we have been forgiven, we can have peace with God and each other. Share a sign of peace with our forgiven brothers and sisters in Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. We'll take a time to um, pass the peace, and when we get back, we'll sing God of Grace and God of Glory, page 435. <laughs> Out here all by your lonesomes? Oh,
gracious God, we thank you for all the blessings which you give us. And we return to you now, God, a portion of the gifts which you've given, and we pray that you would bless others through them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. What do you think that big thing is? It's a kneeler. It's a kneeler, that's right. So here's, here's our question. What do you do on a kneeler? You kneel. That's right, you <laughs> kneel. So why would we have a special piece of furniture for people to kneel on? Anybody have a kneeler in their house? No, couches are a lot more comfortable, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So how do we have a special piece of furniture for people to kneel on? Why? Um, to put the birthday baskets on? Not to put birthday baskets on. <laughs> I don't know either. Why would we have one of these? Any ideas? To kneel. That's right, to kneel. And the reason that we kneel is that today, later, we're going to have an installation of officers for some of the new elders and some of the new deacons in the church. Now, what do elders do? You know what elders do? Run stuff. Run stuff? Yeah, that's part of it. They run stuff. They work on stuff? Work on stuff. What kind of stuff do they run and work on? They, they, um, um, they run the church. Run the church. That's right, they're responsible for the things that happen in the church. What do deacons do? Church. Yeah, they 
work on the church? How do they work on the church? What's their specific job? They have a ministry of mercy. All of the people that need mercy, all of the people that need extra help, the deacons help out. And so today we're going to be installing some new elders and some new deacons. Now with all of these things that they do, why do they do them? Whether they're an elder or a deacon, what's the point of how they run and work on the church? To worship God. That's right, to worship God. They don't do these things for themselves, but they use all of the gifts and talents that they've been given to worship God and all the things that he's given to them. And so we bring them up here, and in humility, they come down and they kneel on this kneeler, and they're commissioned to do everything that they do for the work of God. Now, whether we're an elder or a deacon or neither of those things, that's true of all Christians, too. That we all come to God and we worship him, not for ourselves, but for him. And that's our call, to go and to serve him with everything he's given us and to show how great he is. And if we do that, then he rewards us by letting us be with him forever and forever, starting with right now and lasting to eternity. So you pray with me in thankfulness. Dear God, we thank you that you call out all of your people. We come to you to serve you and to show you your greatness and all of those around us. We ask that you would use the gifts that you've given us to spread that message wherever it is that you sent us. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you may be dismissed.
prepare for uh, safe travels uh, for Sarah's sister and her mother as they head back home. They wanted to beat the foot of snow that we're supposed to get today. It's first for them. I thank God you have a well-healthy baby. Mm -hmm. It's not as people take babies for granted. That's not true. You know, a lot of people don't go. I'm glad you have a well-healthy baby. Um, she paid us on the front ends on that well and healthy thing. And, uh, there were three separate times when we did not think that Ruby was going to make it. And I don't mean just kind of you know, thought she might not make it, but knew she wasn't going to make it. And we went to the doctors, and every time we saw a heartbeat. Uh, and now she is here. But my poor niece didn't have heartbeat and heartbeat, you know, so um, there are a lot of times you have to really be thankful that you have a little bit to do. And thankfulness uh, to God, both in uh, miracles of them being here, and even them not to know that all things are under His power, uh, whether it is uh, joyful or difficult for us in the circumstance, that everything is under His power. So thanksgiving for this child, and uh, in prayer that God would not just save her physically, but eternally. For the, the congregation, I ask for your prayers for her. Thank you, everyone, for your love. I couldn't get along without any of you. You're welcome. So, uh, prayers to Thanksgiving to the church family uh, for uh, everything for Joyce and uh, to continue in that compassion. God's timing was good with the baby, too, or we would have had somebody else doing the thing for her. You're worried if we had a plan B. Never seen somebody so happy to see me when I walk in. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's perfect time. could have been your home delivered. That was her day off. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the first thing I called her when I heard she, she had her, she said, oh, great privilege of uh, coming to you, uh, to speak with you. We thank you for all the things that have gone well and we get to uh, celebrate with you for. We thank you that in tragedy and hardship that you were there for us to suffer alongside us and know that you came down here and suffered for your people. And so we ask for your companionship in all these things as we both uh, <coughs> joyously celebrate and also mourn. And we ask that you be family that uh, is dealing with the uh, truck being totaled as well as Anita's uh, leg being broken. We ask that you comfort them in that difficult time and allow them to uh, make ends meet and to glorify you in this difficult situation. I ask for safe travel as Sarah's side of the family heads back down to the Cincinnati area. We ask that you keep them uh, through all the storm. We thank you for Ruby. Uh, we thank you that you have uh, saved her three times already and we ask that you would continue to do so and that you bring her to you eternally. We also thank you for all of the support that uh, you've given through your church family to Joyce and all the rest of the family. We ask that you be with them in this time of mourning. We also thank you for your perfect timing, uh, that in everything that we do in every way, uh, that you have a plan, uh, whether we get to see it immediately or not. We thank you that we can trust in you and your timing. I pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Start with the congregation choice of hymns. So, what first time for today, babe? Three fifty-eight. First and last verse is three fifty-eight.
seven seven nine. First and last verses of seven seven nine. Verse 
Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you give to the needy, do not know your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you, give, if, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, so their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. So in this scripture, Jesus talks about three different spiritual disciplines, and the message is the same in all of them. They're good, and we should practice them, but the question comes up, why are we practicing? What's the ends to what we're doing? And he starts off by talking about giving. Now, financial giving is a good thing. As Christians, we're commanded to give at least a tenth of all the increase that God gives to us. And as a church, we're commanded to take care of the poor. And so giving to the poor is a good thing that we're told to do. But you see what Jesus said here is when you're giving, don't make it about you. He gives this outrageous example. He says, when you give to someone who's poor, don't sound the trumpets before you give to them. So think of this outrageous thing that Jesus is saying. He's giving us a good mental picture of how silly this would look. Picture that you're walking along in the street and you see someone there begging. You just so happen to have a trumpet for an occasion like this one, so you pull your trumpet out of your trumpet, and you blow a couple of notes on your trumpet to make sure everybody around hears you. You say, hey, everybody, come on over here. I'm giving to this poor person. Look at all this money that I'm giving. Aren't I generous? This is this picture that Jesus paints for us. So don't do that. And imagine what that would look like if it was in today's context. Now, before we pass the plate around, instead of putting your envelope in and passing it to the next one, if you just pulled out that same trumpet that you had on you and you stopped everything and you played your trumpet. You say, hey everybody, wait a second, wait a second. I know that only the few privileged people around me can see what I'm writing on this check, but I want to make sure everybody knows. So get out your pencils. There's a little one that you write in front of you. Write this down. You've got a little order of worship. You can write it down. And then you can be so grateful to me that I let this whole place run. Now imagine what that would look like. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. Don't be like that. Don't give so that other people see what you're giving. Instead, and he paints us another picture that goes over the top just to get the point across. He says, when you give, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Not only don't make a big deal of it to other people, don't even make a big deal of it to yourself. Because the giving is not about you and how much you give, but instead it's about the worship of God. And so he says, even in your giving, a good thing to do, a commanded thing to do, don't do it for yourself and to draw attention to you, but do it for the glory of God, who is the giver of all things. So he starts with giving, and then he moves on, and he talks about prayer. He says, when you pray in public, and you notice here that these things are all assumed, and praying in public is a good thing. There are lots of occasions when we need to pray in public. You know, here at this worship service, we have a few people to lead us in prayer. 
Now, when you eat, there's a prayer in public right there. One person will give thanks for everyone there to God. We teach our children to pray. We pray in front of them and to teach them how to pray. If we see someone who's sick, we'll pray with them. That's praying in public. If we have a Bible study, we pray in public. If we have a prayer group, I hope we pray in public. It says, but, and all these things, don't do it to be seen. But that's not the point of the prayer. He's saying, look at all these people. They like to go out in public and stand on the street corners and get up there and say, hey, everybody, look at me. See how I pray. See how eloquent I am. See how long my prayers can be. See how holy I am. Everybody, look at me. He says, don't be like that. He says, actually, you know, do the opposite. Not that there's anything wrong with public prayer, but the opposite of that is, go pray in the closet. That way nobody can see what you're doing, and your father, who is in secret, will reward you. Because if you're just praying in a closet, well, nobody knows except for you and for God. And that's what prayer is really about, is communicating with God. Not to make other people oppressed with you, but to talk to God. And he says again, don't be like the Gentiles when they pray. All these surrounding nations had ways that they would pray to their gods. He says, don't be like them, thinking that your prayer is about you and how good you are. Don't keep up empty phrases like they do. Because they thought, you know, as long as I go on long enough in my prayer, as long as I say the right words, you know, if I say the name of my God enough times, so pay attention to me, and then I'm going to get done what I want to get done. If you read through Acts, you know, they bring Paul in, and they chant, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians for hour upon hour upon hour. And this is what they would do, to just keep going, because they thought, if I pray well enough, then I will get things done. But Jesus says, you know, God knows what you're going to pray for. You know, he knows before you ask it. So keep it short and simple and pray like this. And then he gives us the Lord's Prayer, which is something so important that we say it at least once every Sunday. And it starts out in a different way than we would be tempted to start out a prayer. You know, oftentimes when we pray, it's about you know, one of our needs. It's about us. But it starts off, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The prayer starts with God. All of life starts with God. And we say that the most important thing to all of this is that your name be hallowed. That you be great and glorified. And everything else comes from that. You know, he gets to our needs. You go down, and a little bit later there's a line that says, give us this day our daily bread. He gives us the things that we need today. But we don't have to be consumed with it. We start with God's glory in our communication with him. And everything is for him. And the rest of it takes care of itself. So he says, when you pray, don't do it to glorify you, do it to glorify God, as all things. And so he talks that way about giving, he talks that way about prayer, and then he gets into fasting, which in that day was much more common than it is today. Uh, it's still good to fast, but back then people did it more often. And when they would fast, the hypocrites, all these people who were doing it for themselves rather than others, would do it in a way to let everybody know they were fasting. Has anybody ever seen me when I'm sick before? You pretty much know when I'm sick. I am terrible at hiding when I'm sick. You can tell that I just kind of go around my eyes every I'm halfway down. They would look about that same when they would, when they were fasting to let everybody know that they were fasting. And then you know they'd go around saying, "Oh, I'm so hungry because I'm doing this for God." Oh, everybody, look at me! I'm giving up so much, and I'm just to hear their faces. You know. They wouldn't bathe the right way. They would look awful and disheveled, and they would do it so that people would look at them and say, well, isn't he holy? You know, he's fasting. Just the other day, he gave, I know, because he blew some trumpets, and he was up there in the street court, and he was praying, look at this guy. Oof, would you believe it? We get to be next to him. Jesus says, no, on all of this, this isn't about you. This is about God. That in everything you do, do it in secret for God. And then, your Father who is in heaven will reward you. And if you notice in all this, there was a refrain. Don't do this in front of people, because if you do it in front of people, that's your only reward. You know, yes, if you stop the styrofoam all the time, the people in the meeting will say, yes, thank you for stopping the styrofoam. But that's the end of it. That's all you really get for that. And anything, if it's giving, or praying, or <laughs> fasting, or anything that you do, if you're doing it just so that people will look at you and say, he's a really nice guy, you get a reward, and that's it. But, if these things are done for God, if these things are done in secret, as a worship of God, then you are eternally rewarded. And this is very important today, as we have an installation of officers, because 
We're putting people publicly forward to say you have a special job. But we don't do it to say, well, they're very honored because they're an elder or a deacon. We do it because God has given us gifts, and he gives us, us these gifts so we can go out and serve and make his name great. And whether we are an elder or a deacon or something else entirely, our lives are public because we're Christians. And if people know that we're Christians, as they should, by the way that we live our lives and the way that we talk to them, when they look at us, our goal is not for them to say, well, he's really got his stuff together. You know, he's a nice guy. But instead to say, you know, I bet he'd be a mess without God. <laughs> but isn't God great? Isn't God great that he turned this guy around? That's, that's really amazing. Everything is God's glory. It starts with him, it ends with him. He's the creator of everything. He is the blesser of everything. And if we are to be rewarded by God, then everything is to be for him. Which is something he allows us to do, not on our own strength, but because he saves us. Because he gives us the Holy Spirit that changes us to not be inwardly navel-gazing and saying, let's do all this for us. But instead, he changes us to be able to serve him. And the people who will go to heaven and enjoy it because we are doing nothing but praising God. And so as we go through this installation of new officers, let's be thinking about these things. That we serve God, not for ourselves, but for Him. In everything that we do. In church offices, in our homes, at work, in every single way, we follow after God for His glory. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you gave us instructions on how to do all of these things. We thank you that you have not left us to our own devices to try to glorify ourselves, which leads to little to nothing, but instead to glorify you, the only one who is truly worthy of glory. We thank you that you have brought us into your great plan so that we get to glorify you starting now and going throughout all of eternity. We ask that if there is any way in which we have been doing this for ourselves, that you would convict us of this and have us repent, and instead do these things for you. We ask that you would guide us in the, the everyday things that we do, whether financially giving, or praying, or fasting, or any other way that we live, that you would guide us in all of these things to glorify you, and that you would bless us in all of them. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And now if all of the incoming elders and all of the incoming deacons would come forward, we'll have an installation. We'll be right up here at the end. I didn't give a lot of warning, so I might take a while if everyone makes their way up. Zoom out. still haven't completely finished the class and taken the test yet, so all of this is conditional on finishing that. And people are uh, learning and being challenged and doing well through that, and they're doing it all so that they can continue to do better. And it's been uh, really wonderful to be with everybody in that process. And so I thank you for all the time that you've already put in. This is a special occasion in which um, God calls out certain people uh, to do work and also certain people to support them in that work. And so there are questions both to uh, everyone standing as well as everyone sitting. And so we will uh, start by asking all of these questions. Uh, we have some that are being ordained for the first time, so I'll ask all of those questions. And everyone who has already been ordained uh, but is just continuing this office will go along with those as well. So the first question for everyone standing is, do you reaffirm your faith in Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord and Savior? Do you believe the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the Word of God, totally trustworthy, fully inspired by the Holy Spirit, the supreme, final, and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the Westminster Confession of Faith and the catechisms of this church as containing a system of doctrine taught in the Holy Scriptures? Do you? Do you promise that if at any time you find yourself out of accord with the system of doctrine as taught in the Scriptures, as contained in the Westminster Confession of Faith and the Catechisms of this Church, you will, on your own initiative, make known to your Presbytery the change which has taken place in your views since the assumption of your ordination vow. Do you? Do. Do you affirm and adopt the essentials of our faith without exception? Do you? 
Do you subscribe to the government and the discipline of the Evangelical Presbyterian Church? Do you? I do. Do you promise subjugation to your fellow presbyters in the Lord? Do you? I do. Have you been induced as far as you know in your own heart to seek the office of this holy ministry from love to God in a sincere desire to promote his glory in the gospel of his Son? Have you? Do you promise to be zealous and faithful in promoting the truths of the gospel and the purity and peace of the church, whatever persecution or opposition may arise to you on that account? Do you? Now, will you seek to be faithful and diligent in the exercise of all of your duties as a Christian and as either a ruling elder or a deacon, whether personal, interpersonal, private, or public, and to endeavor by the grace of God to adorn the profession of the gospel in your manner of life, and to walk with exemplary piety before the congregation of which God is making you overseer or deacon. Do you? Are you now willing to accept the call of this church as either a ruling elder or deacon, and relying on God for strength, promise to discharge the duties required in that office? Are you? And now, please look the vows for the rest of the congregation, so if you all please stand to take these. <laughs> Are you, the members of this congregation, now ready to see these members? <clears throat> so, are you, the members of this congregation, ready to see these members as both ruling elders and deacons? Are you? We are. Do you promise to submit to them in matters of spiritual discipline and to receive with humility and love the word of truth? Do you? We do. Do you promise to support them with your prayers, to give encouragement and assistance to them in every way? as they seek to instruct you in the things of the Lord, and to lead you in the building of the kingdom of God in this place. Do you? We do. Do you commit yourselves to fulfill the terms of the call that you've extended to them, that Christ might be glorified? Do you? We do. And uh, if anyone is being ordained as an elder for the first time, I ask that you come up to the kneeler. If your knees aren't what they used to be, put your hand on it if you want to, I don't know. I know what I know. I thought my legs were going to break the first time. <laughs> and then if everyone, yes, that was okay. And if everyone uh, who's ever been an elder in this church would like to come forward and uh, place hands, that would be appropriate. So I have been an elder before, past or current. aside for this task. Uh, we ask that you would be teaching her all the things that she needs to know in order to be an elder. We ask that you would give her the gifts of being able to lead your people and to know the scriptures and to know the times and the community so that we could continue to reach out. We ask that she would work well with all the other elders on the session and that you would bless us together as a group with being able to lead this church to worship you in everything that we do. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And one more thing. Now, by the authority of the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, and the Presbytery of the Alleghenies, I declare that Katie Berndez has been ordained to the office of ruling elder, and that she has been duly and properly installed. <laughs> you may be seated. Now as we continue to contemplate the call that God has placed upon all of us, of whatever office or position that may be, let us continue to worship him as we rise and sing together as a congregation, hymn number 451, The Christian Home.
fellowship 